Good morning. Uh, I just realized just how long my hair's getting. I'm really going to need a haircut once all this is over and salons open up again. Hopefully I can still hear by that time because my ears are starting to get a little hidden there. Um, I want to talk about uh, serving God this morning. So I think for the last few weeks, it's it's been a lot easier to not. It's been really easy to kind of slip into your own rhythm, your own day-to-day -day, you know, activities. You know, church isn't exactly, you know, we're, we're not meeting. It's easy for you to just miss church. Um, you know, youth groups, the same thing. And so your relationship with God has really been up to you the last few weeks. You know, are you in your Bible every day? Are you reading, praying, doing all the things that the Bible says that you should. And I'm hoping that you all are doing that because there's so much benefit to doing that. You know, God doesn't ask us to have a relationship with him just for nothing. You know, there's purpose to it. God wants us to live life to the full. And the way that we do that is being in communication with him, learning, um, growing more like him. And so this morning, I want to talk to you about a social norm, I guess, about ancient Israel that I think right now, and maybe I should have uh, talked about this sooner than now, um, but right now it seems really applicable to us. And it's in Joshua chapter 24, uh, a little bit of background in the book of Joshua. So, so Moses leads Israel out of Egypt in the book of Exodus, and then they wander in the wilderness for 40 years. And that generation dies off. You know, a new generation rises up, the young people, so to speak. They rise up. Joshua is their leader. Moses dies at the end of Deuteronomy. And then Joshua leads all the all of Israel into Canaan, into the promised land. And they conquer the whole country, um, or at least most of it. I think there was some that was left unconquered. Um, you'd have to check up on that. I don't remember off the top of my head, but I do believe that not all the peoples were conquered in that time. But that's beside the point of what we're talking about this morning. So Joshua conquer, so they conquer most of Canaan. You know, they settle in, they have their allotments figured out, and and then Joshua has this big kind of meeting, you know, about how life is going to be. And the reason that Israel took over Canaan was that the people in Canaan weren't worshiping God. They're worshiping other gods. They're worshiping idols. And so Joshua in verse 15 gives us a relatively uh, well-known passage that we're going to be reading here. And it's something I think we really need to take to heart, not just in this instance with the coronavirus, but always. And so Joshua 24, 15 says, but if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. I've seen a lot of houses that have plaques that say that um, hung up on walls in their houses. And... <clears throat> And that's great, you know, but it's one thing to have a plaque. It's one thing to read it. It's one thing to say, I'm going to follow it. And it's a completely different thing to actually go through with it. And so I don't know what your relationship with God has been the last few weeks. I don't know what your Sunday mornings have looked like. I hope that you've been tuning into Kenny's sermons or listening to, uh, to sermons of other churches, something you know, each Sunday morning and, and taking part in communion with the rest of us. And I hope that I'm just preaching to the choir this morning. But in case I'm not, um, habits form over the course of time. It takes, I think, on average about 30 days, 20 to 30 days to form a habit. And so in the last three to four weeks, you've been able to form many habits and maybe breaking them won't be so easy. You know, going to church. I remember as a kid going to church was, I didn't want to. I became a Christian my freshman year of high school. After that, yeah, going to church was a little easier. Um, but before that, it, I hated getting up in the mornings. I really did. I'm To this day, I'm not a morning person. <clears throat> I just, I'm just not. God didn't wire me that way. 
uh, but there's so much value in going to church, and there's so much value in being in the midst of other believers. And right now, we don't really have that. You know, it's up to you and your own houses. And so it's a challenge, really, this morning, that what are you, and I'm going to talk to the parents and even the grandparents right now, what are you doing to lead your house church? What are you doing to lead your family more towards God? Because if you're a parent of teenagers or kids, God might not be first on their priority list right now. You know, they, they, they have all this time in the world to play video games or to watch movies and TV, to play, to do what they want to do. And I'm willing to bet that most of them, their first priority isn't to read the Bible in the morning. I wish it was. I hope it eventually becomes that. But what are you, as mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, doing to spiritually grow and nurture your family? <clears throat> In the Old Testament, it was the family that was the main source of spiritual growth. There's a passage in Psalms that I preached from at my last on my internship and then at my last church about how the family, you know, is is was the form of discipleship. And so right now we're really in a situation where that is so much the case. So I'm going to ask you, starting today, what can you do to help your kids, to help your siblings, to help whatever family you have? Grow closer to God. Because that's ultimately what we're here to do. That's what the church was formed to do, is to make disciples, to love people. And what better way to love people than sharing the love of the Father? I've been reading a lot over the course of, of these last few weeks. I've read 10 or 11 books. I think I'm on my 11th book. I've read 10. And a couple of them, the last one I read was... Uh, it was called, Who Are You When No One's Looking? I think it was the name of it. It was by Bill Hybels. And you can say what you want about Bill Hybels because, you know, he came out with some sin in his life that wasn't, um, that, that he didn't really repent from. That, that There was a lot of, there was a big mess in his life. Kenny talked about it in a sermon a while back. But in the book, he talks about character. And how to form character. And a lot of it has to do with how we love people. There's four different kinds of love that he talks about. He also talks about endurance and discipline and a couple other traits. It's a fantastic book. I really enjoy it. And it, it only took me a couple days to read it. Um, but right now, what's your character say about you? If your family... duplicates what your relationship with God is, are they better off? I know that's a hard question. It might be a challenging question. You might not want to answer that. But right now, you are the best witness to your family, if they aren't believers, than anybody else. Me, Kenny, any of the church leaders, the elders. You know, we, we aren't there. We aren't with you guys right now. Hopefully that changes soon. I hope it does because I'm so ready for it. But how are you going to change or how are you going to live out your faith in a real way? This is a time where it really gets real that going to church doesn't really make you a Christian. It's the truth. It's a great aid. It's something we're called to do. Something I take seriously is going to church, not just because I'm paid to do it, not just because I'm uh, on staff at the church, but because of the importance of it. But being a Christian is more about who you are. What is your character? Who are you behind the scenes where we all try to doll ourselves up for Sunday morning and put on this facade that everything's okay? Are you in your Bible? Are you praying? Or are you forming habits during this quarantine that 
might be hard to break and might be not might not be good habits to have going forward. So I want you to take some time to reflect. Think about who are you compared to who you were a month and a half ago, a month ago, three weeks ago, two weeks ago. What's changed? And how can you get back to a thriving relationship with Jesus Christ? So that's what this is all about. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, there are a lot of hard teachings in the Bible. There's a lot of things that you ask of us that you know, we, we, we try to avoid, that aren't comfortable. But over and over again, you don't call us to do the comfortable thing. You call us to trust you, to follow you, to obey you. And that you will give us life and life abundantly. Father, help us to stay committed to you. Help us to come back to you if we've uh, perhaps drifted a little bit or backslid a little bit in our faith or in our relationship with you. And Father, help us be a good example to those around us, even if it is a limited number right now. Help us to love each other. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I love you guys.